Hello everyone, in this video we will have a detailed discussion about pap smear or cytology. I am very happy to make you all understand that what is actually pap smear, why we are doing pap smear, what is the importance of pap smear. There are answers, there are very diplomatic answers that yes we want to do screening, we want to do this thing and this thing. I want you to understand what, why we should do a pap smear. Pap smear is a very important screening test for CA cervix. It is not for the patients who already have developed CA cervix. It's for normal people because CA cervix is a very common neoplasia in females. Second most common after the breast carcinoma. And the very happy thing here is the CA cervix has a long pre-malignant stage that is called CIN. And again the cervix is actually readily approachable to us. It's not like just CA endometrium or CA ovary when we have to take a biopsy or when we have to see those tissues like ovary and endometrium we have to go for invasive procedures. But here the cervix is readily approachable directly with us and the cervix is readily approachable and it has a pre-malignant condition then we should have a very good screening test that can be repeated multiple times and it's very easy to get so with the pep smear we actually can detect the CIN and we can actually prevent the CS cervix and we can actually save many lives. So pep smear is very important. It's not only for CS cervix patient but all for all normal women. What we do in a pep smear? We don't take even a, a biopsy kind of thing for example if you want to take a biopsy you have to go for invasive procedures you have to you have to cut the tissues that would be very painful we have to give it in anesthesia and it's a hell lot of things but pep smear is a very easy you don't need to give anesthesia you don't need to give analgesia and you don't need a very high quality setup for that pep smear is a very easy so what we study in pep smear actually we study the cytology the name is a uh, very common pep smear but actually the name should be popular is cytology because the methods of cytology are established by the by the scientist Georgi Papaniculo that's why it's generally called as a pep smear now what we do in a cytology we do a study of cells cytology means study of sight and sight means cell what we study which cells we study cervical epithelial cells we study cervical epithelial cells there are two basic types of cytology smear and liquid cytology but at the end of the uh, method we have to prepare a smear only and we examine the smear under microscope. Georges Pepanoculo was the scientist or doctor or the father of pep smear. It discovered and establishes the method. It is a method for screening of CIN and CA cervix. Now we have some screening guidelines that who should screen themselves and when and what is the uh, uh, what is what is the period when we should actually repeat the screening. So we have some general guidelines like start of screening starts uh, the start of pep smear screening should be at 21 year irrespective of the sexual activity start before this guideline it was just uh, th uh, thought that that the patient should be screened after sexual activity but 
right now what is guideline you have to start the screening at 21 year of age irrespective of start of sexual activity if this if the girl has started sexual activity at 17 years also then also you have to screen them first time at 21 year only for 21 to 29 year those 10 years there is a higher chances of cs cervix because you know this that cs cervix the epidemiology the age of 20 to 30 is a peak for having a cs cervix so you examine or you do screening at every three years at every three years after 30 age that is 30 to 65 years of age you have to repeat the examination every five years but along with the DNA testing for HPV okay so every three year every three year in 21 to 30 of age and after 30 year up to 65 years of age we have to do pap smear with HPV DNA testing every five years now when we stop the screening, we stop doing pap smear after 65 years of age. Only when some criteria are fulfilled. Which are those criteria? That there, is, should, there should not be history of any moderate to severe dysplasia. Mild dysplasia is okay. But there should not be evidence of moderate and further dysplasia. okay then only we stop at 65 and when we see that there are three tests comes negative consecutively at five years then also we should stop the screening at 65 otherwise we should again continue screening at every five years if the HPV uh, sorry if the patient is HIV positive then the screening should start whenever it is detected for example if if the patient if the girl of 16 year gets hiv then when should we when should we get started screening of cervix until and unless the cervix is approachable and when the cervix is approachable when the patient starts sexual activity only then the cervix is approachable so once the patient is of hiv and it is of 16 year and the girl has started sexual activity then we should screen right at 16 year okay it's every six month remember every six month once the girl has reached 21 year then the screening should be at yearly yearly screening should be there in HIV positive patients now what is the treatment if we find if the patient is already diagnosed with CS cervix or CIN or the patient is undergone hysterectomy then we have to again screen at vaginal cuff even cervix is removed yearly screening with vaginal cuff for three years after this hysterectomy if we found it negative then we sorry every year for three year for example uh, this is little bit difficult for example if we do a hysterectomy then we do a pep smear every year for three years okay if we found all these yearly examinations are negative or normal then we again start screening at every three years which we which we were doing in 21 to 29 years already so after hysterectomy you have to screen the vaginal cuff also yearly examination for three years if it comes normal then we can shift from yearly protocol to three yearly protocol okay now so these are some basic guidelines I have told you it's not mean that all guidelines are here only you need to read those guidelines from the CDC or WHO's okay but this is the basic basic uh, 
for foundation of guidelines okay now what is the method of pap smear it is very easy the patient should be in the lithotomy position we introduce the cuscose speculum so that we can directly see the cervix and then we have some instrument from which we will take a smear which are those instrument the very commonly used instrument is a iris spatula this is the end these are some different kind of spatulas this is the iris spatula as we already have discussed this is extended dip spatula this is spatula with a cotton swab this is spatula and a cyto brush and we have a cervix brush here okay how we do see so <clears throat> so uh, this is the survey brush you you are seeing here okay now how you take the sample this is the cervix and this is the os iris spatula stays like this and you have to rotate it for 360 so that you screen all this ecto cervix if you want to take sample from endo cervix you need either extended tip of spatula or a cervical brush which goes inside the cervix and take the sample now once you taken the sample you have to make a slide ultimately you have to make a slide the way of making slide changes differently for example if if, if you want to make slide directly at the source of sample for example in the clinic only you are making the slide then you make two slides one is for iris spatula and one is for endo cervical brush and then you fix those slide with 95 percentage ethanol without air drying and send to the lab okay okay and there is another method of liquid cytology in which you using cervical brush you take the sample you directly put this part only this part in a container this is a container this part should be put in this container and this container is sent to lab directly though they these people the pathology people will make the slide and examine okay ultimately they are stained with papanoculi stain to see the different kind of cell there are four basic cell can be seen on uh, on the pap smear the first one is a superficial cell they are large cells with small penotic nucleus they stained pink and they are uh, dependent on estrogen so if there is a estrogen is a predominant hormone at that place then these cells predominate the things the second comes the intermediate cells these are the blue cells basophilic appearance the nucleus is not very penotic there is some amount of good nucleus is there round nucleus is seen these cells are predominantly present when the progesterone is the hormone which is predominating third are parabasal cells which have a round they are very round cell with large nucleus they are called parabasal cells when there is a menopause there is no estrogen progesterone this cell predominate actually and the fourth cells are basal cells with small cells and large nucleus inside it these are basal cells so if you want to see actually how those, those cell looks this is here these are the superficial squamous cells with dense penotic nuclei here dependent on estrogen these are the intermediate cells which stand basophilic or blue having some large amount of nucleus now how to generate the pap smear report this is not your work this is the work of pathologist but we should understand how they work so you should actually uh, very able to read the report what they have said that's why we are discussing here otherwise it's not your work as a gynecologist to learn how pap smear is reported okay there are actually uh, the the reporting of pap smear is now standardized that means there are total seven pre uh, pre-decided reports 
and you have to report only on those seven results okay you cannot just uh, it's for pathologist again pathology people only can have a seven protocol to report the pap smear what is report number one it is an unsatisfactory pap test that means the pap smear sample is not well achieved report number two is infection there is some infection candida infection may be there report number three is asc us now this thing is confusing us what is that asc us means a typical squamous cell of unknown origin so whenever the uh, the pathologists see any squamous cells or atypical squamous cell we have discussed what is atypical squamous cell in our previous videos so atypical squamous cells if the pathologist can see but the pathologist cannot actually differentiate the whether it is a cia whether it is a high grade lesion low grade lesion or ca cervix so it is a, of unknown insignificance so report 3 is asc us that means a typical squamous cell of unknown significance okay now report number 4 that is l cell low grade squamous epithelial lesion okay report 5 is ahch that means a typical squamous cell definitely l cell is there but you cannot exclude h cell so there is a possibility of having h cell so it is a report number 5 what is report number 6 definitely h cell the pathologist people can actually stamp the high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion Okay, this is a report number six. Report number seven is atypical glandular cells. That is glandular cells. So it again going up to the endometrial carcinoma. But again, atypical glandular cells are also very important. So there are total seven lesions. Now I want you to show this uh, images so whether you uh, so you can actually easily identify what I'm trying to tell when we say L cell. L cell means low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. So you see here, this is a cell. Which cell it is? It is superficial. Cell. It is a pink. So if you see that the cavity, actually the superficial cell should have a very pinotic nucleus, but the nucleus is becoming larger and there is a cavitation around the nucleus. Okay, you see a granulated nucleus in these cells also here a very large nuclei that is CIA1 what is H cell you can see actually a abnormal cells of having large nucleus again increased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio pleomorphism that means the cells have no different no particular uh, shape mitotic figures are seen giant cells are seen again i have already told you that you need to go for a basic basic uh, video on neoplasia so all these things we are seeing here that is pleomorphism giant cells increased nc ratio all are suggestive of neoplasia so this is h cell lesion so this is how we do a pep smear we will learn what is the management protocol according to the report of pep smear in next videos. Thank you.